Hello, and welcome to my digital bonsai tree. Uh, yesterday we were doing some stuff with uh, these smelting columns. Uh, we are not finished with that. We have not even placed a radar to commemorate the whole sight vision or anything like that. But what we do need to do is set up some coal. These six coal lines are A, in the way, and B, not sufficient. Uh, I think a better way of sorting out this coal stuff is to just have it go all down on a... Take it down vertically instead of horizontally. So let's go ahead and get our guys over here all cleaned up. Let's take this up on there. We got a lot of time before this coal ends up running out. Uh, I am not all too worried. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of our miners. Just place down a couple of lines. Uh, in the time that we have been apart, I have taken a look at my cheat sheet. Found out that uh, to fill up an entire yellow belt takes a solid 26 of these miners. Uh, double that for red belts. And we can see that through a number of different ways. Uh, let's see, using this answer, can we reverse engineer the mathematics process involved in that? Alright, so first of all we have coal, which has a mining hardness of 9. Uh, mining time of two. Okay, so those are two variables. This has a mining power of three. And... Yeah, I don't know how that math works. But basically, what ends up happening is that uh, each second this outputs about 1.5 uh, pieces of thing on the coal. Belts, uh, you can see they transport 13.33 items per second. Now that is only for both sides, and these things can only output to one side at a time. So that means like about uh, 6.8, about 7-ish items. Mumble, mumble, ramble, ramble. So we are going to combine all of these into some sort of belt fabrication unit. So let's go ahead and make a couple more splitters. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and get this all powered up. There it is. Alright, all powered up, all ready to go. Let's go ahead and get these guys mixed together. One down, so I don't have to deal with the power pole. Boop. 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 So, an electric mining unit is going to take about, uh... 26 of these guys to fill up a red belt. There is exactly 29. We're going to have to have these uh, two belts go into two opposite directions. So let us do something with that. Okay, so this splitter right here jams these two larger lines together. Line gets jammed again midway, uh, on the second part. Both lines end up going through the same splitter. And so we have a roughly equal-ish amount going through these two areas. But because the power draw from this main belt line... Well, I guess this is now a secondary belt line. This handles... 18 furnaces that don't need to be refilled no more because we are full up on copper. Um, 16 ovens and then uh, this paltry power source. So that one's not going to get used as much. Let's go ahead and take a look at power while we're down here. We are okay. Let us continue.
let us take this belt line down, down, down. Okay, so we got that going on for our bad selves. Let's go ahead and get some power on down here. We'll have this go to the upper portion of the coal line. Have this travel along the coal belt. Okay, we've got this going on over here, never actually placed down the radar because there was no power. That is integral for my next demonstration, so let's head on down there. Coal is coming along fine, it is not an entire belt, but that is because there are 29 miners in operation and it is getting uh, fed between two belts. It will back up because consumption is not altogether too high, it's going to be I8. Go ahead and place this on down. Storage upon conveyance. Oh yeah. So one thing I want to point out is that this is using all of the iron ore at the same time. And that is why the outside smelting position is preferred because this inside smelting position let us observe okay so only one half of a line is being used in this and you can see only one half of the line is moving all the way back this uh, upper line or upper half along this uh, conveyor belt not moving at all all of these guys that are on this side, because this is going through a belt balancer, there's some screwy things that are uh, making it not seem like it's working, but it is working very well. It's mitigating the effects of this uh, mishap. You can see that the left side here is working at all times, the right side here is getting backed up. But only one half of a line is used, so all of this right here is not going to get realized. Whereas, we follow along this belt line down here, yeah, that one's seeing use. That one's seeing a lot of use. Actually, let's see here, how many are on this line? Got a total of 32 electric miners, so that should be... Filling an entire belt. Undo that. As we can see, some of the bottom ones are getting uh, backed up. One way that we can end up solving that, so that we can get that true full belt, requires uh, using some tricks with undergrounds. It's fun. I want to talk about this design right here. There are multiple upgrade paths throughout this factory. One of the big ones is going to be the difference between yellow belt, red belt, and blue belt. Those are speeds at which things can be conveyed. And seeing as how this is a game all about conveying things, it's kind of important. Let's go ahead and, for consistency's sake, set this up right around here. Boom. Boom. 
this one is lower. That is why that is achieving something different. Okay. Hook this guy up. Get these two splitters on board. And then hook this guy up to the other iron line. So there's different things that you can end up doing to uh, future-proof yourself. This is a design from something awful. If I go into my blueprint bridge, let's give proper credit where credit is due. Lars. Lars threw up this onto a public Google Doc somewhere in the past, very far deep. A lot of my material is still 1.14, but that's okay. And that's one of those things I do want to show off, is that there's a uh, multitude of solutions for your various problems. And one thing I want to hit up is that Factorio is a game where the only problems you have are the problems that you create for yourself. And there are different ways to mitigate those problems. One of the paradigm shifts that I end up going through is the fact that all of these things will be able to get upgraded, but not everything is the same size. So this particular belt design is made to facilitate a larger oven in the future without having to change the overall shape of this monstrosity. And there is a cost benefit there. Uh, do you spend the extra resources and extra time to make life easier for future you? Or do you just say, hey, in the future I'll have easier tools to tear everything down and build it back up again? Those are the options. This build needs to go down that way. But overall, as far as a function goes, this design trades off space, which is a cheap resource in a way, because space is effectively infinite in this game, in a whoa man sort of way. Very expensive for power poles. Easily using double. Hold on, let's go ahead and compare this side by side. A lot of button presses, uh, very complicated design comparatively. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look. So, first design, something that I might have either fever dreamed or inadvertently stolen. One of multiple things. Uh, this one takes up uh, 44 ovens, so you see that they are doubled up. Only requires 24 power poles and 88 inserts. Has a longer profile than the one to our left. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is a design that is half of this in kind of a roundabout way. Uh, 24 ovens consists of... The same amount of power poles as this guy, despite having double the ovens. And a very similar amount of belts. Not all too... For being half, it is not half the size. And... Yeah, there are reasons for that. Uh, reasons for this. Upgrade to tier 2 oven, the metal oven. Exact same size, you just like pass it on over. Don't have to change the anything. Upgrading to the tier 3 oven. 
It is a three by three building. And it does not require coal. Now, to me personally, I feel like the paradigm shift from tier two to tier three is so massive that it creates that it uh, demands a fundamental redesign. Seeing as how it's messing up with the hookups, we are eliminating one input resource that is the coal. So I generally don't bother with uh, these future proof designs like this. But you can find your own way. If you have an idea of a shape and you want to see that shape on your map at all times, forever and ever and ever, and you don't want to see it, future proofing like this is very important. If you don't, then it's like whatever. Let's go ahead and put down a radar. That radar is going to have to move at some point in time. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves some of this iron plates. Feed it into various machines. And have it do what it do. Finish hooking up our iron. Well, it seems perfectly fine right now. Yes, there's one little thing. Forgot to turn on the research. Let's go ahead and see if we got steel. We got all steel. Let's go ahead and put down some warehouses. No, we are going to be expecting to see neighbors soon. So let's do some bullet damage go ups. Yes, that is the correct decision. All right, so real quick thing. We're not uh, installing all of the things so far, but there is a minor project that I want. By the time I am done building the smelting columns, that's when I'll start on uh, the steel smelting column, but I want some steel before then. So we're going to stick this right here. Now steel is the process of creating an iron plate and then shoving that iron plate into the oven to get burnt. Very fun. So we're going to bootstrap this little guy. Yeah, I don't know how this is working. Having these inserters, well, go ahead and get these guys started so I can show you what the process is but basically you take this iron right here good stuff you collect five of it put it into this box here a very long progress bar is going to result in wait for it a single steel beam Thank you, research. That was very well timed. Bullet damage. Number go up too. Alright, and one of the things that you notice is that uh, this number goes up to 5 at aroundish the same rate that this progress bar fills and creates a thing. Uh, the cook time for steel plate is 5 seconds. It requires 5 iron plates. Funny enough, iron plate requires 1 second. And you can create five of them in the span that it takes one iron. So th this ends up becoming a puzzle that's very easy to solve. It's just you put one stone oven of iron to one stone oven of steel. This gives you access to this delicious steel that allows you to make a steel axe. And the steel axe is different than the iron axe because observe how slow the iron axe chops down a tree. Place it in. Very slightly faster. So important. 
So I just want those to start cooking so I can get a couple of steel axes so I can uh, maybe get some bullets for some house guests. Uh, in the early, early, early game, uh, steel is a requirement. You do not need a lot of it, but it is required. I just wanted to cover that base right there. Shoutouts to Nilaus. Showed me that little thing. Gonna also do the same thing for some stone brick. Except I need coal. Yeah, no, nah, I don't need it for stone brick. It'll be fine. Anyways. Just wanted to coherently uh, pronounce my thoughts about different smelting forge columns. Show off two different types. Completely articulate why the inner fed problem is a problem. See, only one line of iron is moving. These are not being used to their potential. I kind of want to like mix this along with one of these other ones, but at the same time, it's it's not necessary right now. This this will be done at some point in time. Um, anything else? Oh yes, chopped up some of the copper. And finally bootstrap machine is complete. There it is. That is the correct song. And with that, I bid you farewell and thank you for joining me. While I prune my digital Bonsai tree. Oh, damn it, I ran out. Oh no, I cursed.